I originally, I would say maybe 15 years ago, I saw something on television, Nova or something, about uh, Morgan's something or other, and uh, it kind of stuck with me. And uh, I would say seven or eight years later, I was examining uh, or looking at a dog that a friend of mine actually was handling in an animal hospital. And it was a golden retriever. It was just kind of laying on the clinic floor, and the owner was there. They were doing something else. And I went by, and I said, what's going on with your little dog? Oh, he's got skin problems right by his pads, and he just they don't want to heal and stuff. And I said, oh, let me take a look. And so I looked at it, and that's what this picture is here. And I, uh, I said, well, let me go get a slide. I'll just make an impression smear of it and see if I see something. I was bored, so I had to keep busy. And so as I'm walking away, I notice something sparkling down by the pad, little reflections of something. And I thought, oh, he's got little pieces of glass in there. So I went and got the slide, and I came back, and there wasn't any purulence or no pus. There's no drainage, nothing much to put on the slide. So I got a forceps, and there was some crusty material around it. And so I grabbed some, and I put that on the slide. And I said, well, you know, Good luck with your dog, and uh, went and looked at it under the microscope because I'm curious, and uh, I like learning new things. <laughs> and so um, I'm looking under the microscope, and I'm seeing these threads. So carpet fibers, you know, I thought carpet fibers. Um, well, I've got to talk to her, just tell her that there's some carpet fibers in there. And then I thought, wait a minute, what was that Morgan thing about? Morgan something or other. Yeah, I'm going to hang on to these little things. I'm not going to say anything to that lady. <laughs> Good thing I didn't. Uh, but anyways, uh, I looked at it under the microscope, and oh, oh, how do I change the slide? Which one is it? The what? Oh, <laughs> you, okay, thank you. Um, so anyways, this... Uh, I looked at that, and then let's go to the next slide. It, what you're going to see on this one. Mm -mm. Oh, it's down. Is it down here? The right key at the bottom. Thank you, sir. So this is what I saw on the, under the microscope, uh, thread-like things. And they were actually, there was some tissue, as you can see, embedded uh, or surrounding some of these uh, uh, fibers. And these were, uh, and I apologize for some of the images, this was early in my career, <laughs> about 10 years ago. Uh, and some of the fibers look like nylon fishing line, but I thought, yeah, these, these aren't carpet fibers. So I, I asked, uh, asked a few questions here and there. Um, I, I don't know how the dog was uh, managed, but uh, I, I saved them took them home and uh, took some pictures. And uh, anyways, I, I just tucked it away for a while. And then one day, not too long ago, um, I took a lipoma, a fatty deposit, off of a dog. And you can see where the staples are on the slide there. Uh, this is it when it came in after about seven days, just checking the incision. I didn't put the staples in somebody else did because it didn't heal right yeah it was the other doctor where I'm working right now apparently it the incision didn't heal very well fortunately most of my surgeries heal up just nicely so I blamed it on somebody else and uh, so then I saw this when the dog came back after a checkup and I thought okay now it's healing pretty well but there was some crustiness around it and I recalled that I saved the fatty uh, deposit because when I uh, sectioned it, as I'm taking, taking it over to put it into the formalin, I noticed something shiny sticking out of it. And of course, I'm thinking more gallons uh, and more gallons, I'm sorry. Uh, and so uh, I sent that section in knowing that there was a fiber in there. And the pathologist didn't see it. And the reason I think why is, you know, they take such a fine slice that you, you could have a, uh, any kind of a fiber in or around it, and you're not going to see the length of it or the depth of it. 
And my thought is that uh, in clinicians, veterinarians, and this is some of the things that I'm going to put on a website. I just I just read a minute ago. I registered a domain name, uh, morgellonsinpets.com, and this sort of stuff is going to go on there. Okay. Um, and one of the things that I'm I'm going to suggest is that if we see an, an unusual growth, whether we want to send it to the pathologist or not. We should analyze it under a bright light to see if we get some reflectivity. And also, if we do see that, uh, to get confirmation of it, uh, if we're going to send it to a pathologist for confirmation, not to slice it. We need to look at a chunk of it that where we can shine some light on. I've got some really fun pictures that um, where I, I was looking at different things using different light sources. and. If, if you look at a specimen like this, just using the uh, uh, light from the microscope, you're going to miss a whole bunch. You've got to shine light down on it in different directions. So, uh, and this is what I was seeing. And obviously, you can see the fibers, I'm sure, on that slide. And then it finally healed up nicely on its own. But these are kind of cool pictures. Um, and I wish I, I could zoom in on them because as you look through different depths, uh, you will see more fibers. Uh, if you're looking just at the surface of the specimen, uh, you're going to see what's there. But it, it, when, as you focus up and down, you're going to see a lot more that's going on. Isn't that a nice picture? Yes. Look at that. You yes. should, I'm going to actually blow it up and put it on canvas and put it in my living room, because I like that picture. <laughs> um, I want somebody to tell me what that little black dot is. I think uh, one of the doctors the other day told me that it's, uh, it might be a, a, you know, I forgot what he said. <laughs> no, but I think it's, it may be a part of one of these long black fibers. Um, so let's see here. So again, this is just another photo of it. And this is the pathology report. And I called the pathologist. Uh, and I said, did you see anything at all that looked like fibers? No, not really. I'm thinking, okay. Uh, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to send her this PowerPoint and show her what I saw. And that's how I need to go about this. I, gotta, I have to get pathologists saying, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. So they're not going to see it if they slice. We've got to look at the whole section. And interestingly, this is a cat that had weird things going on. I could feel some kind of tightness under its skin, and I got permission from the owner. There was this little mass on there, too, and I couldn't figure out what it was. I said, but it's not supposed to be there. Let's take it off. And so when I was taking it off, I noticed that as I cut the mass away, it was like attached to something. And you can see like a strand there. Um, and so I pulled as much of it out as I could. I would have had, if it was my cat, it would have had an incision that went wherever, up to his ear if I needed to, to get at this thing. And uh, again, you can, you can see down here um, at the, on the bottom slide, um, the, that long stringy thing. There was a name for it that looked like a, like a tree a branch or a fern or something. There was a name for it on one of the fibers that looked like a, like a plant. Um, what was that? A feather one, yeah. And so uh, that ca I tried to get a follow-up on the owner, and uh, I can't get in touch with them because this was about probably 10 years ago. And uh, I wanted to see what kind of follow-up I had. And this one here, I'm, I'm philosophizing. And if you can read that, that's fine. Thank you for paying attention. Watch for morgellonsinpets.com. Thank you.